Welcome back to the channel. This morning, we're going to be repairing a chain link for the doors to stop them from opening as much on the steam locomotive tender. We're going to be replacing these metal rings that are pretty worn out with some new ones, and we're going to use a special technique to make these that involves welding and heating, and I'm going to walk everybody through how we're going to do that. We are replacing these chains here. The purpose of these chains is to kind of act as a stop for the tender to stop the doors from opening the whole way when there's a hole in it. And these rings would go around the door and they'd hold the door in place. I'm going to show everybody where they went and how they worked. So as you can see over time, the coal and the weather just kind of ate these chains away. So we got replacement chain to make it look much nicer, but we don't have these rings. And I'm going to make these rings today. It's going to be pretty straightforward, pretty easy, cool technique, and we'll get to it. All right, so I have, I have this mocked back up to show everybody how this works. So the end of this gets bolted to here. The ring gets sent through here. And then the chain gets pulled through. And then when the door opens, you can see it gets to a point and it stops the door from being able to open anymore. These hinges are cast and if they go beyond what they're supposed to, they can get damaged, break and fall. These doors are extremely heavy. So it's important that this works. This would have worked in the past and it looks presentable today. And having the, the weakened chain link, I mean, you can see how thin this chain is here. So definitely time for it to be replaced. I'm going to keep this and possibly this special chain here when I replace these. But that is what these work. Now, the critical thing with this is I can't make this ring too big, otherwise it won't fit through. So we're gonna take a measurement of the ring together and then we're gonna find a piece of pipe that's gonna act as our new template to make a new ring. So I have the tape measure here and I'm gonna measure about the outside of the ring. Now the ring's pretty deteriorated, so I'm just gonna use my best guess. Looks like I'm at about three inches that's the outside of the ring. And then I'm going to measure the inside of the ring. And I'm looking at about two, two and a quarter. That to me right now is more important. I'm gonna double check this one here. It's I have two rings. Looks like, yeah, two and a quarter. You can see, I'll put the tape measure there. It's hard to get a good angle at it, but about two and a quarter. And I'm gonna go find a piece of pipe that's about two and a quarter around for the outside diameter and I'll be back. So I was, I was pretty quickly able to find a piece of pipe that'll definitely fit the bill today. So if you look at this one, the outside diameter, the farthest measurement's about two and a quarter. So what I'm gonna do, my next step, is I'm gonna take this piece of pipe and I'm gonna tack weld it here. Then I'm gonna take my torch, I'm gonna start heating this and slowly bending it around and you'll see how I do that.
create ground stock, which is what this is, what we're making the new ring out of, you can't just bend it uniformly around something. If you try to bend it, it's going to be too tough, or when you bend it, it's going to make an erratic circle. It won't make something nice. So what, we're, what we did, the point of this is we tacked it to the piece of pipe that's going to act as our guide as we go around. But we're not going to be able to do it cold because this is too thick. If it was 8th inch, you might be able to get away with it, but it's 3 8 inch diameter round stock, so we cannot get a nice bend without any additional heat. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the torch and we're going to heat it around as we go. So if you look, now we have the chain on, but obviously if we go to put the chain back on here, it's not going to fit. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do, since I have to make two of these, I'll make this pipe a template. I'm going to notch a little bit of the pipe out so the chain can slide through it. I can get my radius again, and then I'll get a really nice bend when I heat this up and bend it over for the last time.
I cleaned the ring up a little bit so it's ready to get back, put back on with the chain. So the big thing that we're going to check for before I do any kind of touch up to this ring is that I want to make sure it fits through the hole. So we're going to try it here and it looks like we got it. Nice. Close. I only have about an eighth of an inch so it's always good to double check before. What I'm going to do now. So I'm gonna open this gap back up and I'm gonna weld this and then just work this cold a little bit, touch this up and it'll look pretty good. So here's our end result. You can see the new chains in the front with our new ring. And I ended up having to reuse this extra link because this piece can't thread through this, or fit through this, not thread through it. But here it is, the completed piece. I think it looks like a pretty good replacement. Now one thing that's kind of a dead giveaway with this is if you can see how it's modern chain because there's the seam from where it was welded or resistance welded together, however exactly they did it. The original chain, it's a little harder to see, but it looks like there are some spots where you can see where it was joined. Other than that though, that's our replacement. I'm gonna do the second one. Thank you for joining me and have a good day.